a very good day to all the faculty who have joined in for the online two week refresher course in zoology conducted by the teacher learning center ramanujan college university of delhi in collaboration with harmal panchakroshi shikshan mandals ganpat parsekar college education vidya sankur goa under the aegis of pandit madan mohan malviya national mission on teachers and teaching ministry of education i am dr pranay baidya division head of research at aranya environment research organization goa today we will be discussing about understanding communities through beta diversity concepts and tools for application we will be looking at how the frameworks of beta diversity are very important in studying ecological communities we will be looking at various concepts in theory and the various tools which we will be using for applying these theoretical concepts on real life community data sets which are obtained from the field understanding how biodiversity is distributed on earth has been a fundamental objective for ecology and it is very important because understanding biodiversity can help ecologists and scientists infer broad patterns and processes that drive macroecology biogeography and ecosystem functions studying biodiversity has gained a sense of urgency because human influences on natural systems have led to scenarios like habitat loss land use change climate change pollution and something that we can't see in general altered biogeochemical cycles and all of these in totality is accelerating biodiversity loss this is making it very important to study biodiversity with a lot of urgency but biodiversity just by the inherent basis of its definition can be studied at various levels and it ranges from genes all to the level of ecosystems however incorporating several of these levels simultaneously to study biodiversity introduces statistical as well as empirical challenges and that is one of the reason why biodiversity is usually studied at the level of species that is very popularly looked at in the literature and probably by adding one or two more extra levels but no, never all of them simultaneously one of the major challenges in studying biodiversity is how to measure it and one of the first and still widely used matrices was introduced by whitaker in 1960 whitaker proposed three measures alpha to measure number of species at any given site gamma to measure number of species in a broad region and beta to measure the extent by which species richness of a region is greater than the average species richness of a site or a collection of sites now let us understand these definitions using this example on your screen at the right hand side consider this dashed box as a broad region and the green circles as sites alpha at each site is different for example at one site alpha is 4 that is species richness is 4 in another site on the right hand side alpha is 3 species richness is 3 and the other one alpha is 2 if we look at the shapes which refer to each species we immediately know that gamma that is the species richness of the entire broad region is 4 there are four species and we can calculate beta as gamma divided by mean alpha which works out to 1.33 and hence as per the definition of whitaker's beta it means that the value of beta 1.33 is that value by which the alpha of this region is greater than the mean alpha of the region but this was the example of what whitaker's beta means however after this explanation i think it is very clear for all of us and the, all of us realize that alpha and gamma are more or less same their species richness and they differ only in the extent at which they are measured 
and hence they are called as inventory uh, diversity indices in the literature but alpha and gamma are also very useful and uh, historically they have been used for identifying global biodiversity hotspots but alpha and gamma cannot in inform us of something very crucial and that is about variation in composition of community for example in this hypothetical case the green circles are representing two different sites and the shapes are species now alpha in both of these sites are four but this does not tell us that different species are making up a, this alpha of four and that is the strength of beta diversity and that makes it very useful for us for ecologists to understand the broad patterns and processes of biodiversity and it provides us insights about macroecology biogeography and ecosystem functions as discussed just because of this advantage that it has now when we look at the entire scheme of things as discussed by uh, beta diversity is very useful in trying to make investigations in the field of macroecology biogeography and ecosystem functions and the framework that is classically been used is the classical framework that is the whitaker's beta but currently multivariate measure of beta diversity is more widely used because it has very high resolution especially while handling data at large scales and it is independent of sample size as well which makes comparison between sites very robust in this case you can see the matrix at the bottom the multivariate beta diversity is calculated using pair wise dissimilarity of species composition between sites and this is repeated against different sites for example we will calculate what is the difference between the species composition of site 1 and site 2 site 2 and site 3 and site 3 and site 1 with this method we can form a distance based matrix and this distance based matrix forms the core framework of multivariate beta diversity analysis now we have to understand that beta diversity is not static and it varies in both space and time in space sometimes separately in time sometimes separately but in real life situations it varies in space and time both in space beta diversity is calculated as pair wise dissimilarity between sites as we had looked in the previous example but temporal beta diversity or beta diversity in time is slightly different what it does is it tracks the pair wise dissimilarity of the same site over different periods of time for example in this case site 1 the dissimilarity between time period 1 and time period 2 is measured time period 2 and time period 3 is measured and this happens in a linear fashion and these dissimilarities are then measured in various different sites however in real life scenarios as we had discussed spatial temporal beta diversity will track variation in space over time it tracks what is the difference of species composition in various sites within a broad landscape in different sections of time and this forms the major background of the frameworks that are used to understand ecological communities with beta diversity the next step would be to understand the various frameworks of partitions of beta diversity that we will be looking in the next session